Hello class, so for this week we're going to be doing brushes. So I thought it might be useful to bring open the brush window first and show you where you're going to get to all those sweet, sweet features that allow you to create your own custom brushes and save your own custom brushes so you can load them up later. That's just under Windows, Brushes. There is a caveat though. Notice that we have access to brushes and this is when you store them and where you pull them back up without any problem, but brush settings, boop, it's all ghosted out. And so some of you will go, wait, Eric, I know what this is. You need a new document. So let's go ahead and make a new document. We'll just leave it at uh, the same defaults I think I was working with last week. It will be horizontal at 10.5 width and 7.5 height in inches, 300 pixels per inch, RGB color mode, which is what most of our assignments will be this semester, 8-bit, same deal, white background, okay. And we haven't talked about color profile, but we're just going to use the default sRGB, IEC 6 1966 version 2.1 and we'll talk about all that later in the semester I promise for now we're just going to create it ta-da but still no brush settings and then it occurs to you wait brush settings means brushes so if you click on brushes and that's B on the keyboard as in a bumblebee that will get you boom your brushes but wait there are other ways to get to it it requires something that uses brushes which includes the brush tool where the bulk of what it's doing is brushes, but other things do that as well. Stamp tool, for example, uses brushes. Notice it's not ghosted out. The smudge tool uses brushes, and it has a few differences, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, it has to do with the tool that we have and all that good stuff. And then you also have the dodge, and you have the burn. Both of those use brushes. I believe the sponge tool also uses brushes, a little underutilized tool. Um, all those guys use brushes, and so voila, you have access to brush settings, which makes total sense. So you'd come in here, and you'd adjust everything, and you make it beautiful. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then you can let your imagination run wild and just follow your heart and create every kind of brush under the sun. It will be amazing. But then where do you put it? Well, you put it under brushes. And so that's kind of why these pop up at the same time by default. Uh, you might have them stashed inside of the little dock here. Um, I just pull mine off all the time because I like to move things around constantly. I'm going to make a new layer real quick so I don't paint on the background. So under the standard brushes, just by default, you'll have things like your general brushes. If you pop it open, uh, default will have just these kind of weird things. And depending on the version of Photoshop you have, uh, it will be arranged differently or pop out. I actually frequently like to have brushes and brush settings separate simply because I prefer to have a list of brushes and I like to have brush settings wide enough to get to everything. So I almost consider them their own thing there. But for now, I'll just leave it docked. Um, that said, you can control this, and we'll, we'll cover this real quick, and then we'll dive into everything else, and there's so much stuff. You can control this, and you can store stuff here, and we'll store most things. Let me go ahead and do this. So if we created some crazy, amazing brush, I'll just do this. Oops, if I can click. There we go. I'll just do this. So we've got a brush. Amazing. We love the brush. We've worked very hard on this brush, and we want to save it. Well, here's what I would recommend doing. I would create a new group and you can do that a couple of ways. You can click on this folder icon at the bottom of the brushes palette, or you can go to the flyout menu on the brushes palette and you can go new brush group. Again, you can actually only access that if you have the brush selected, which makes no sense to me uh, for making the new brushes and stuff because the previous one should go in. You can still access the brush brush group though, which is great. I guess they just didn't want people getting confused because if you didn't remember what your last brush was selected, then it's going to get hairy quick. So I'm going to make a new brush group and I'm just going to call this, uh, for me, demo brushes, but it might be better. Actually, let's both do this. We'll just call it, whoops, custom brushes. And we'll make our custom brushes and store them in here. So heads up though, on this assignment, I don't need you to turn in this brush group. I would like you to back it up though, so that you can move it from computer to computer on a flash drive. You can back it up. You can email it to your friends. You can put it up on DeviantArt and you can have people download your brushes, which would be pretty awesome. What I'm going to have you turn in instead is a little sampler showing your brushes. And that's the sort of thing that you'd put up on DeviantArt to demonstrate what your brushes are capable of doing. And 
you'll, yeah, that's it. You'll be turning in kind of the preview and you can see what that looks like online. Um, I'm going to have a video up before this one, hopefully, that will also show you some demos of different things students have done for it. But all that said, do back up your, your brushes. So how do we do that? Well, we got to have a brush selected. So we have our incredible brush we love so much and we have a group selected and this is in the brushes window. I'm going to press the new brush button, create new brush. I can also do this fly up menu, new brush preset, either one will work and boom. Hey, what do you want to call this thing? Amazing or mistype that amazing brush. There we go. And it has options to include tool settings, which is quite good, but uh, you may not want to do that. Uh, we'll talk about what the tool settings are later, but yeah, right now we're just going to leave it default. You can also include the color. Now all this is really great. Tell it okay, and we've got that. So what's happening? Well, this is interesting. Uh, if you're in an older version of Photoshop, you don't have some of those options. You just create the brush and boom, it would literally capture whatever's in brush settings and that's it. Stuff like your color, stuff like your opacity, your flow, all that wouldn't be captured as well. You'd only get your brush. So what they had in the past was tool presets. And tool presets would, at the time, allow you to capture things for everything. So for example, I could just capture this brush and it goes, hey, are you sure you'd like to create a brush instead? We recommend doing so because brush presets now contain all the functionality of tool presets, but with additional benefits such as stroke preview and the ability to organize into folders. Learn more here. Uh, no, we're just going to make our own. So we'll make this amazing brush, include color, all that. Boom. So back in the day, this was the only way to capture stuff that was up in your option bar. And uh, heads up, for some reason, people don't like to talk about the option bar, but it's the thing that dynamically changes according to what you have. So like on the move tool, it says you have the move tool selected, has presets for it. And in fact, this should be the tools preset. So if we were to go over to the brush, it should load up the tools preset here, right there, same thing. And it would load up stuff like flow and opacity and all that and store it. And then if you had a different tool in older versions of Photoshop, the tool preset would still allow you to select it and the brush preset would not. It would just be shut off and you couldn't choose it. So Adobe's been moving a lot of functionality around recently, which is actually a terrible idea. <laughs> it's great to add on functionality, but they should never remove functionality. That's kind of, that was the rule of Photoshop through like 2015. Like that was just how it went. You could not remove functionality. You could only add. And they've changed their stance on that. And unfortunately that means that a lot of their stuff's getting shakier over time. Um, but hey, that's the world we live in. And so we will adapt. So now, uh, tool presets really are not the way to go anymore. You're going to want to stick with the brush presets for your brushes and kind of ignore the tool presets, unless you're in an older version of Photoshop, in which case the tool preset may be super useful for you. There's another time that the tool preset is useful. If you are working on a long project that you know is going to take you a few months, like if you're painting something up and you need to take a lunch break or it's late and you want to go to bed, something along those lines, you can stash whatever settings you have over in the tool preset and not have a whole bunch of brushes that are things like bottom left corner at 33% or something that won't make any sense later when you're trying to use it. You'd have it over in the tool preset, which you wouldn't use as much. And then you could bring that up and then pick up right where you left off. So it's a different way of organizing things essentially. So for this assignment, I'm not going to deal with tool presets. In fact, I'm not sure we're going to deal with it again for the rest of the semester. So I just wanted to let you know that's the tool preset window. It's the same thing as this little drop down that comes up in your option bar. I don't know why people don't say option bar. Uh, we're going to be using the brushes instead and everything that, uh, that, that pertains to it. So in the next video, I'm going to talk real quick about what opacity versus flow is, and we can play around with that. In order to do that though, we do need to talk about a couple of these settings so that it will make sense when the way that things behave. Okay, I will see you next video.